Hello, anatomy students. Are you ready for the axial skeleton? Oh, here it is. I know it's maybe slightly creepy of, of all the things I'm going to be showing you uh, when you first see it. Uh, this is a completely articulated vertebral column. And when you take a look at all of the vertebra, you take a look going down and then to the bottom. The vertebra have different shapes and there are different regions of the vertebral column that I'll be telling you about and I think that's a good place to start. And the first seven vertebra are cervical vertebra and they're distinctive in anatomical ways. It's not just you count to seven and that's cervical. There's features of cervical vertebra that I'll tell you about. The, the next region are the 12 thoracic vertebra, and they're distinctive in that the ribs articulate there. And so there are special bone features that we see in the thoracic region that have articulating surfaces for the ribs. And then you go down further, and there's five lumbar vertebra, and they have particular shapes. We'll talk about um, the, uh, the meaningful, the functional differences between these regions. Um, and for the lumbar region, there's some distinctive kinds of movements that they encourage and also discourage. Thoracic region does that as well. And then this is the sacral region. Um, this whole piece is called the sacrum, but it's made up of five separate sacral vertebra and they are fused together into this one unit. Um, and then at the end, there's just these little caudal vertebra, um, pretty much little vestigial bones from our ancestors having tails. We don't need a tail. And so they've become just quite small little things. Now, um, what I'm going to do from uh, to continue is to take a look at disarticulated versions of these bones and I'll tell you about their features. All right, well, let's start as they say from the top and we'll look at the first cervical vertebra. It would be abbreviated C1 and this has its a separate name. Um, the, these, these first two have their own names and this one's called the Atlas and it gets its name from that mythological figure, Atlas, who um, holds the world and so he kind of supports that and the Atlas articulates with your skull and so kind of holding your big round head um, and this is a very unusual vertebra. Um, when you see the other ones, I guess maybe you'll appreciate this better, but um, it's, it's very ring-like. It doesn't have a centrum or body. You, this is what you would typically expect to see uh, at the most anterior portion of a vertebra. Um, but we'll, we'll see that on other ones. Um, this obviously is the hole that the spinal cord goes through. Uh, this hole I'll explain later on with some other uh, cervical vertebra, but all cervical vertebra have this hole here. Um, but what's um, interesting about the atlas is that even though it's kind of ring-like and kind of looks the same front and back, that you can tell just by looking at it which is the superior surface and what's the inferior surface. Um, 
you can see that this articulating surface, it's called the superior articulating surface, and I'm going to zoom in a bit more. Um, this articulates with the occipital condyles of the occipital bone. I'll bring in a skull in a second, um, but let's just contrast that with this inferior articulating surface. This is going to obviously then articulate with the vertebra that's second, uh, the axis, and you'll notice that this articulating surface is just a bit more flat. It's not so curvy. And here it is again, the superior, kind of curvy, I'm trying to get you to be able to see it at all different kinds of angles. You do need to be able to tell the difference. And I'm going to, I'm going to zoom back a little bit. Um, bring in a skull here. Here's our skull friend from our previous videos. This was our female skull. And so here's her occipital condyles. There's the superior articulating faucet. Here we go in like this. And um, so this is the way that it articulates. This is if she would be upside down. Let's take a look at her right side up like this. And so what the superior articulating surface allows for is this nodding motion. You have these curved surfaces that are curved, kind of cup-like. You have this condyle surface, and um, that's where you get your motion, uh, this, this nodding of the head um, is the occipital condyles kind of rocking on the superior articulating faucet of the atlas. Now I know another thing I should probably mention is what's up with the rug? This is a new rug. Um, yes, I've changed the location of where I'm going to do these videos. The other room was right next to my son's room, and so if he's uh, going to sleep, which is what's going on now, uh, I don't want to be just yammering away about bones in the next room. And then other days I find I kind of want to make video, but he's playing his music. And I don't think that you want to learn anatomy while listening to Gangnam Style and YMCA. I, I wish he had better taste in music. Not that those songs are really bad, um, but it's probably not songs that you want to hear. Um, but that's just a little snapshot in my life. I have heard the song Gangnam Style probably a thousand times in the past year. Uh, it's, it's just a bit of a constant, unfortunately, in my life. He does like some other songs, but anyway. Um, so those are the, the main features of the atlas. Um, uh, this part, the neural arch, which is enclosing the uh, where the spinal cord goes in and uh, these articulating facets and the fact that there's no centrum in this hole which I'll tell you about in a second. Okay so uh, on to bone number two. This is the axis and another name is C2 and the axis gets its name because it has this very unusual part of uh, this vertebra that pokes forward. Um, it's thought to maybe have even derived from the centrum of the atlas, interestingly, just a kind of an evolutionary question. Um, but this process is called the dens or odontoid process, and it pokes superiorly and I've got the atlas here you see it's got a little groove and so it fits on there like that and 
So those articulating surfaces, you can see how they match up. And take a look at it this way. So this is the anterior view. And so that superior articulating surface meets with the atlas. And it works like an axis. That is, something rotates around it. And in this case, it's the atlas. So the atlas with the skull on top of it can rotate like this. And so that's how you get your shaking the head kind of motion. These two vertebrae together with uh, the skull on top and, and the rocking that you can have on the superior articulating faucet there, and then these two allow for a lot of mobility um, between just these two vertebrae and the skull. Um, in fact, sometimes people have instability between these two. Um, it's called allantoaxis in, uh, instability. Um, maybe it comes from an injury. Um, it could be that um, you might be born with a proclivity for this. Actually, my son uh, having Down syndrome, that's something that um, kids with Down syndrome have to be screened for. He doesn't have it. But um, if there's a looseness between these, it can be dangerous because look at the dens there. If there's a looseness, it can poke into the spinal cord. And this is very, very close. I don't know, maybe if I can bring the skull in here again. Um, this is very, very close to the base of your skull. And at the, uh, where the spinal cord starts to um, uh, transition into the, the very bottom of the brainstem, this area called the medulla, that is an area that has a lot of basic body functions, maintaining your heart rate, your breathing rate, your digestion. Uh, and so if someone has um, traumatic neck injury, um, maybe whiplash in an auto accident, this can jar loose and poke into the spinal cord, maybe cause paralysis, and um, or it can poke forward well, superiorly and um, maybe even damage the medulla and, and some of those brain centers. And so um, if there's any concern that, that there's a looseness, then they might fuse these together. And so maybe you know someone that has had this kind of fusion um, between these two. Um, but uh, let's also take a look at other features of the axis. Here's the inferior surface. Um, there's the articulating surface with C3. Um, and then there's a centrum. Um, it's also called the body of the vertebra. All right, so I've introduced you to C1 and C2, but there's seven cervical vertebra. And so you should be able to identify a vertebra like this as being from the cervical region. And um, it has some unique features and I'll, I'll finally talk about these openings here because they're found in all cervical vertebra. We saw it in C1 and C2 and all the way down to C7. You see this, what's called transverse foramen, a name that anatomically makes sense. It is uh, transverse. It is more off to the side and um, the, well, let me see if I can, you know, I, I only have a few vertebra, um, but you can see by stacking, um, I'm stacking this cervical vertebra behind the axis, um, that a whole line of these transverse foramens ends up making a tunnel. And it's the 
vertebral or vertebral artery that passes through these transverse foramen. And um, that is another artery that serves the brain. We talked about the carotid and the carotid canal. And um, in that movie, I had mentioned that the vertebral artery goes through the foramen magnum. And um, this is where they get to that. So they, they travel along all of these transverse foramens and eventually go into the uh, uh, foramen magnum. Um, some other openings, uh, the, the first two had this as well, but this is just called the vertebral or vertebral foramen. That's where the spinal cord passes through. Here's the centrum or, or body. And you can also see uh, what's called the spinous process. It's also called the neural spine. And in cervical vertebra, they're bifurcated like this. Um, looks like this one's a little bit broken, but you see how it kind of splits into two. Uh, when you look posteriorly, it would be kind of like this on a person. So that's posterior and that's the interior. And that's distinctive of cervical. This obviously is distinctive too. Um, and you can also see here, um, it's colored red, the superior articulating faucet. And here it's not colored, but this, this flat surface here is the inferior articulating faucet. So that's where they articulate with the, the next vertebra. Sorry, it's kind of going in and out of focus a little bit, but I think it looks pretty good. Um, and, you know, well, okay, I'll, I'll mention it right now. Um, what's colored blue here is something called the pedicle. I usually use thoracic vertebra to explain pedicle and lamina, but I'll, I'll do it now and I'll point it out on thoracic as well. So um, this portion, so you can think of all of this as the neural arch, but it's made up of this portion called the pedicle, which is in blue. Let me get real close there. And then there's this part of the neural arch here, and this is called lamina. So now we've kind of covered all, all of this, the spinous process, lamina on either side of that, and pedicle down here, the part that attaches to the centrum.